If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode oh, of yeah. Mind Pump. Get some. For the first mm. 50 minutes, we do our fun conversation introductory. We talk about cycling supplements what these aren't supplements for cycling get on the cycle it's bro. taking supplements in a cycle did i confuse everyone yeah what? we talk about the I'm future confused. of the supplement industry we make some predictions that will come true you can bet your bottom dollar on that they always do we got crystal balls we also talk about china's announcement what is trump winning uh-oh was, <laughs> was adam right son of a bitch oh was adam my right? god i remember that episode yeah. <laughs> we talk interesting about, we talk about china's social ranking uh, program that they're doing countrywide sounds like an episode from Black Mirror. Yeah, uh, we talk about they're living in a, in a game. We cover new technology where they're making video cameras that are smaller than a mil- millimeter wide. Find out where Justin will go. Yeah, <laughs> and we talk about I'm invisibility in cloaks. We also mentioned our sponsor, Four Sigmatic. I think I talked about Cordyceps in particular. Four Sigmatic we makes... We gave them like a five-minute commercial. Yeah, they make high-quality mushroom-based supplements, one of my favorites. If you go to Four Sigmatic, F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get an exclusive discount. We also mentioned Organifi. They're the makers of organic supplements, protein powders, green juices, gold juices, one of our favorites. Uh, if you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code They're Mind the Pump, juiciest. you will also get another exclusive discount. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, should I focus on correctional and mobility work only if I have terrible form? We mentioned Prime and Prime Pro in that particular part of this episode. Which is great because we happen to be giving away no BS six-pack abs anytime you buy a bundle. That's so right. if you mm. fall in the category of the person who asked this question, that bundle's for you. Prime prime bundle. And you get hooked That's up. That's right. But we also talk about what you should focus on if your form is bad and why correctional exercise will actually improve your gains. The next question was, do we think the free market has contributed to our obesity rates? Mm. In other words, are richer countries with more food fatter? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Next question. It's uh, true. Are there any suggestions that we have for people who have a fear over starting a new business. Being an entrepreneur is tough. It is difficult. It's not for everyone. It's scary. Um, and so we give some advice uh, to people who may be thinking about it, but are just, you know, they're just, just afraid. Yeah. And finally, go for it. This person's asking, why do CrossFit women develop a trunk rather than an hourglass waist? They want, the, this particular person likes CrossFit, but doesn't like the trunk development. Like, what kind of advice do we have? Is it CrossFit's fault? Is it because the top athletes tend to look like that anyway? What exercises are best to develop the hourglass shape? We talk about that in this episode. And also, Adam mentioned earlier, we are giving away the No BS six-pack formula for free. This is a program specifically designed for your midsection. You get it for free if you enroll in any MAPS bundle. Now, bundles are when we take more than one MAPS program and we combine them for a particular goal, like, for example, the Sexy Athlete Bundle. This is where we took MAPS aesthetic and MAPS performance, and then we organized them in a way to where if you really focus on aesthetics, but you also want just functional athletic performance, now you can combine the two and get the best of both worlds. We bundle things together, and we discount the price uh, 20 to 30% off. Enroll in any bundle, get the No BS six-pack formula for free. You can find out more about these programs and others at mindpumpmedia.com. I've been very impressed with uh, Organifi and Legion and some other natural supplement companies. Yeah, they're, for- do, they're so, dude, five years ago, if you tried to, if you found a supplement that was all natural, it was, it was, a, it tasted like powdered dog shit. Of, of the two that we have right now with mm-hmm. Four Sigmatic and Not with Organifi, taste. which one do you think you use the most? And like, what are you consistently using it to? Out of all three of us, you probably definitely use the supplement products most. Although I, I do use a lot of the Organifi too, mm-hmm. but I think you still you, out, I think you, you still outperform me. Do you use anything uh, daily? 
Um, yeah, I do the Organifi drinks daily. I uh, one of them. I think for you sure. might beat me then. I don't. Mm. I don't use anything daily. Not even the because I know you. You sometimes you're on your kicks Coffee. with the shrooms with the four sigmatic. Yeah, so I I do everything and I tend to do everything in cycles because here's just this is just general observation. And oh, I already know. I don't know. I, if I this agree is, with you. Yeah, I don't know if this is always true, but generally speaking, if I take something and it has an effect that I can feel, then I know that my body is is trying because your body always wants to keep you in equilibrium, right? Homostasis, sure. always. So whatever you do, like you, you drink coffee, and you know coffee increases you know circulating levels of adenosine in the brain, which makes you feel awake and all this other stuff. And so your brain, your body adapts to it by by reduce by you know shutting down or sh- closing off receptors and doing all these other things, <clears throat> so that when you drink coffee now you're back at normal, which sucks when you go off of it. And I feel like. Anything that has an effect, unless I take something that has no effect on me, but if I take something, and I'm like, oh shit, I feel this. Right. I always cycle it because inevitably, if I take it long enough, I start to get less and less and less of an effect. Fade away. Oh, I no, I 100 yeah. agree. When you and I were talking even about like my hormonal stuff that I was mess that I'm messing with too, yeah, yep. it was I was already thinking that because I was uh, this is my third round I ordered from Amazon, and I was like, I never run like a after back to back bottles of any any supplement. I always cycle off for a while. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and I, and I always feel a difference by coming. And so I don't know if it's a, there's a strategy in, in staying no longer than about 90, 60 to 90 days. I max. go 30. Yeah. I go 30 now because what I've, it, it depends on the product, but what I've noticed is if I take something for, if I take a product that has an effect, like let's say I do the um, Lion's Mane or Chaga or Cordyceps, which are great products from Four Sigmatic, I notice. I, I know I legitimately notice a, an effect from them, and uh, I you know for a lot of people maybe think it's just because I'm sponsored by them. I've used those products in other from other companies and brands. In the well, past. you were you were using Four Sigmatic before we even fucked with them because when we went to Paleo FX last year, which by the way we're he- we're heading up to Paleo FX. So if you guys are listening, we're going to be in months. Paleo FX. Yeah, we'll be out there for a week hanging out. So hopefully, if we got listeners out there, we get to run into some. If of you guys. see us in in Paleo FX, come up and give Sal a wedgie. And give, yeah, and <laughs> give me a wedgie. Give Adam a noogie and scream "Mind Pump" as loud as you can, and you might <laughs> get a free. You t-shirt. might get a free T shirt or a free Maps program. <laughs> Kick just give me a nuts. high five. Yeah, not I, okay. nuts. <laughs> just, the, the the wedgie part was just kidding. Yeah. Everything else is real. No, but I I remember. I mean, we were heading there, and you said I I want to go after some sponsors of companies that I really like while we're here. If I run they into were the, they were the first priority. Yeah. They were there, and they were the first. Comp- so so companies. like Cordyceps, I've used on and off for a long time. And with Cordyceps, what I notice is uh, if I'm training at a very high high intensity, high level. Because you know how it is when you when you train your body really hard, like I'm doing that right now, when everything's when all cylinders are firing and I can push my body to a certain limit, it's like you're you're dancing on the edge. You know what I mean? There's that edge of like you're doing the right amount, and then if you go too much, you're over the edge. But you want to push that edge because there's always a, you get those good returns from it. And so I feel like I'm doing that right now. So whenever I'm training hard, my gut health is good, my diet is good, my sleep is good. And I'm pushing the limit, and I'm seeing progress, and I'm pushing and pushing and pushing. Then when I throw cordyceps in, it's like my recovery's better, sleep's better, stamina's better. Um, I tend to get a libido boost from it. But if I stay on cordyceps for like six weeks or so, it's like the peak I get from cordyceps is about two weeks, two or three weeks. That's when I'm getting like the most out of it. At four or five weeks, it plateaus, and then at about six or so, I start to feel like, am I taking something, or is, there, is anything really happening? I don't really mm. know. And so my mentality now, what I used to do is I would take supplements until they stopped working and then I go off of them. But lately, well, lately I say lately, but this is probably the past couple of years. What I've done is I've applied the same mentality that we, in the same concepts and understandings we have with exercise, mm-hmm. with supplements. And what's the best, when's the best time to switch out of your a training phase? Is it when you plateau or before you plateau? No, it's mm-hmm. before. Right, so what I do is I... I wait. I try to jump out before that fifth or sixth week, when my body starts to plateau, mm-hmm. because plateauing and then declining is telling me, at least this is my this is just again my my uh, I'm guessing that receptors are down regulating and things are changing to bring my body. And so by that point now, if I go off, now I'm gonna feel like shit for a week or two as my body tries to rebalance. So I want to hit that peak, then go off, 
and then you know wait like a few weeks or whatever. Typically, I'll wait three to four weeks and then I'll go back on. Yeah. And it's different from product to product, but um, I were you heavy in the cordyceps doing the the volume because I know you've started ramping up uh, your volume and uh, you know workload again, dude. I've so the things that really contribute to this, and I'm going to be 100 percent honest, they're not the supplements. The supplements make a difference, mm-hmm. but they don't make a difference if everything's not like on point. You know what I mean? If my di- if my gut health isn't great, if my- Oh, it's throwing a spoiler nutrition- on a car. We've always talked yeah, about that. It just doesn't- you know, I don't give a fuck if we're sponsored by somebody <laughs> or not. Like at the end of the day, it is the, it's the, it's the last, the, it's the last thing. Yep. The order yep. of operation is sleep, stress, nutrition, programming, all these other things yeah. are- And I've noticed that, that when I use supplements, effective supplements, I should say, ones that have actual research that show that they do something. When I use supplements- on top of a optimized healthy body or whatever and I feel good, then I notice a boost. If I throw supplements on top of like where things aren't 100 or feeling great, I, I feel like I've ta- I'm taking nothing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it's almost like your body's ability to uh, respond, adapt, uh, optimize is enhanced because you're healthy, because you feel really good. When you're not, like you could throw whatever you want at it, your body doesn't, it's, it's preoccupied. It's preoccupied with other things like your shitty diet or right, right. your lack of sleep or your bad training. So right now, because the, the last four months I've done this prolonged fast and this nutrition protocol, um, I, I just feel, and my sleep is like, we're, we're really prioritizing sleep. So and it's tough because I have, I have kids, obviously, so I have you know, dual custody. And when they're with me, my daughter goes to bed at 8.30, my son goes to bed at 9.30. Well, we wake up at 5 to work out. Is that by, they, do they naturally go to bed at that time or do you allow an hour later for him? If you allow- That's weird. If you allow your kids to stay up- especially with electronics, my son will stay up till four o'clock in the morning and my daughter will too and they'll get wired and be shitty. You have to prior. I prioritize sleep. No, no, no. What I was asking was the the fact that you have them on different. That's that's different to me. So like when I was a kid, my sister and I are a year apart from each other and we went to bed at the same time. Like we had oh, a yeah, bedtime. Yeah, yeah younger, go to bed earlier. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's, so is that like a reward as you get older? You Do you have to tell your daughter like- I try not to keep make it as much of a reward as much because then, if, then they feel like they're being punished for being young. You know what I'm saying? So I, there's definitely truth to telling your kids. Like well, I would think, I would think that would be like an argument or a fight you have to deal with sometimes, where it's like you tell your daughter it's time for bed, but then your son gets to stay up and whatever. Yeah. yeah. So and I've thought of that, and the thing about the whole he's older argument, which has truth in it, you just have to be careful because when you're younger and you hear that, it feels like it sucks to be young and it's a punishment and that kind of stuff. So what I instead what I say to her is I say, well, you're younger, your body needs more sleep. Um, you tend to feel healthier when you get a little bit more sleep, and that may change as you get older. I also tell her boys and girls tend to have different requirements for sleep, and then individuals have different requirements, and you just seem to do better when you go to bed at this time, and, and sleep is important, and that's it. I just, just leave it at that because individual variances matter there too. Like some people do better with more sleep and some and my right. daughter for sure let me tell you something right now last night i put her to bed at 8 30 and she was scared of something you know she's like oh i think something's in my closet so it took her an hour to go to sleep and i'm pretty mm. I, I, you know if you can't sleep that's fine but you're gonna stay in your room you can chill there until you fall asleep yeah okay. i haven't got to that point yet it's interesting to yeah how i'm gonna deal with that so that's good yeah. good to know because i yeah like both kids will go to sleep together but you know they da- definitely have different sleeping patterns like ethan is such a light sleeper and so he's just always like constantly up or down or up or down and so we've we've had to kind of like get him like we gave him like a little light so he could read you know if, if he can't sleep he's just like okay i'll just sit up here in my bed and read so he doesn't keep coming upstairs and be well, like i can't sleep yeah I, so i do I, I taught my daughter like a couple of relaxations because she was scared last night so i tell her stuff like what I, and, and this is you know i kind of sell it to her and i say okay uh, think about like the most awesome dream you could possibly have and what it would have in it. And if you close your eyes and you imagine this amazing dream and really think about all the things you want to experience in your dream and the more detailed you can get, the better, then you may dream about that thing in, in real life. So you may actually go to sleep and have that dream. And so she's been practicing. And I know what that does, right? If you sit there with your eyes closed and you imagine, you get deep into thought and that tends to relax you, makes you yeah, forget about, you dream about it. And then she may, she might, she yeah. might or might not dream about it, might not remember it. But yeah, last night she was up till 930 and my daughter needs, she needs a lot of sleep. Like she wakes, she woke up this morning pissed. Like she just so, <laughs> every time like, yeah. so Je- Jessica goes upstairs, right? We come in from the workout and I'm, you know, making the kids breakfast and stuff and 
she's like, okay, I'm going to go wake up the kids. I'm like, oh, thank you. So she goes upstairs and she's much more gentle than I am with the kids to wake them up. Like if I wake you up and you give me some shit, like <laughs> lights are going on. Flip the light yeah, on. you're fucking waking up. Yeah. So she's tried to wake them up or whatever. She comes down and I don't hear any movement, you know, and I'm like, these kids are going to be fucking late. Like if they don't. So I'm like, hey, are you guys awake? And then my daughter, real loud, I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like, oh, fuck. eight-year-old. You, know yeah. you know? got to get oh, the, yeah. uh, is, it, is it the Google Home commercial or the Alexa commercial? Have you seen that? Where the, the parents are sitting down, they're having breakfast in their kitchen. It's a two-story house. And it goes, Alexa, play you know whatever wake-up music. And then it's in the whole house. And so their bedroom, all of a sudden, it's oh, like so, yeah, it's some like wake up song or some shit like that, and it's blasting. No, in what room. we're gonna do now is I, <laughs> yeah. I have a I have an alarm clock for her, and I'm and she she tends to like responsibility, so I'm gonna tell her uh, set your alarm clock for seven a.m. or whatever, and um, and then you're responsible. Get yourself up, and then she'll do it. I know she will. Uh, or if she doesn't, I'll have to wake her up. But I think that's that's better than waiting for dad to come in and try and get you up and then you act like shit and then you piss me off and then... Well, I know we switched over to your kids, but I actually was going to ask you guys your thoughts on where you think the supplement industry is going in the next five to 10 years. Do you think we're going to see some major shifts? Do you think we're going to see uh, a bunch of new stuff come out? Or do you think that the the supplements are going to slow down and we're going to see that kind of slowly start to dip? I think hmm. personally for supplements, I think more... It's too much money. The whole supplement market is going the whole, you know, natural type approach. Whether that means it's actually real or not, we'll we'll see. But I also think uh, it's going in the in the lifestyle uh, direction where you'll get like a, a supplement, and then it's more niche. Like, oh, you're you're into yoga, hiking. Here's your product. You're into yeah. here's your product type of deal. Uh, other than that, I don't see any huge breakthroughs. You know, with with products or anything. Yeah, I, really I look at it like back in the day you had GNC and then you had like a vitamin store next to it, like a little wellness, like mom and pop thing. All of a sudden now that's getting more popular. Yeah. They're trying to figure that out and that angle of Ooh, like- Ooh, that's a good point. It feels so- like, What is that? Like, what are you talking about? Like you, you remember there was like the performance supplement, like GNC type stores like in the mall, but then you would see like this little tiny- um, you, you like little wellness place that was yeah, just yeah. vitamin based, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was just all like your chiropractor or whoever was like recommending all these like herbs and like natural things. So I feel like it's kind of it's going to shift into more. That's going to be super popular, and then yeah. it's going to get exploited. And it, I don't know. I just feel like it, until we we cure the the mindset that a pill is going to be the answer, like in a condensed form. That's that's gonna provide like instantaneous sort of results in a health direction. You know my you know my favorite it'll, uh, it'll su- exist. supplement store experience ever was in Chinatown. I went to a Chinese medicine supplement store, and there were very little bottles. There were very few bottles with uh, like labels and stuff like that. Most of it was actual dried herbs in jars. Oh yeah. And the person working there would ask you. You know what are you looking for? And then they do like the, the like Chinese. Uh, have you guys ever been to someone who does Chinese medicine? No, I haven't. So they'll check your pulse. They'll check your tongue. They check a couple other things. And based off of that, Rectal thermometer. <laughs> yeah, they put their finger. Your finger. I knew it. Yeah, it's good stuff. So anyway, but they do they do a few things, a few Chinese medicine type tests or whatever, and they're testing your pulse for the strength of it and the speed of it and a couple other things. My uncle told me all this stuff. The tongue, I forgot what that was for. And there's, I think they look at your hands and your nails and then they ask you questions and then they will take the herbs out of the jars and create your own custom like supplement and then they'll write out the regime so this dried herb make a hot tea with it twice a day you know this one take at night oh that's kind of cool i I see some potential yeah and then on top of it they'll say because chinese medicine rarely ever gives you just herbs yeah like they don't ever do that they're not like oh you have a problem with your libido here's some herbs They'll say, okay, uh, this is the diet you should eat. These are the foods you should avoid. Um, These are the exercises you should do and then take these supplements. Mm. It sounds like a diagnostic sort of thing. I think we're going to see performance supplements begin to die. And I know that people are like, what? You're crazy because athletes and this and that. I think much of that. right. Yep. And I think what it's going to look like is like this. I think we're getting so close to this ability to uh, track uh, everything like we talked just the other day about the the tooth cap right and be able to calculate the, I think we're going to be able to have something that gives us daily and weekly feedback on you know what we could be lacking nutritionally so for example like let's say 
and this happens to me all the time. Like this week, we we had butcher box come in, and we had all this red meat, and then the next day I had some more beef, and then I had bison, and I really hadn't got a lot of white meat or fish in the diet for the last few days. So now I'm I'm aware of this, so I make the conscious effort to either one take fish oil or two go get some fish in my diet. But I think the future will be you will get these this immediate feedback and it'll tell you like, hey, you're lacking these vitamins. You know, you haven't got any foods that are that are, have these things and it'll give you that feedback and then you'll supplement that way. You, and why and why I think this is going to crush performance supplements is because what we're going to find out is when you actually are just giving the body what it needs nutritionally. Yeah, I- that it's going to a whole new level. They'll outperform people. On exactly, the, yeah, it will outperform just, the people who are taking the latest, greatest. You know, to explode with creatine infused. This, you know, what I'm saying, <laughs> like it's going to shit on those products because well, it's th- going to show how little you need of like each amount, right? So that, that they're not going to be able to move products the way they used to. Right. That's been a dream of yeah. mine since I was a kid. Like when I was a kid, I used to like fantasize that I had something that could tell me. Here's your. Here's what you should eat that today. Does seem like a dream. Here's your supplements yeah. for today, based off of your body and your in your your hormonal level and whatever. Like that would be. We're not far from that. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I I kept thinking like that when we had uh, the body bug and we had all these like you know wearable devices. I'm like, where's the progression of this? Where's the the eating version of that? You know, and it's like we've been waiting for a long time. See, this is why you know back on the on the topic of, of of whole supplements is this is why when you when you take a, a whole plant, you know there are things in that plant that. Typically, many times, this is what Chinese medicine has found as well. Many times, what's in that plant, along with the active ingredient that Western scientists have synthesized, there are things that enhance its use, reduce the potential negatives within your body, and there's like natural, um, there's like natural compounds within that whole plant that prevent some potential negatives. So, I've used this example before, but like. White willow bark contains a, a compound that if you extract, it's very similar to aspirin. In fact, that's where they that's where they learned about how to create aspirin it was from this white willow bark. And if you extract it and concentrate or standardize it, you can overdose on it, no problem. It's hard to overdose on just white willow bark though. You know what I'm saying? And there's other benefits to it that may actually help that you don't get just yeah, from the active component. Material so like one, one thing that I really like about Four Sigmatic is, for example, cordyceps. There are compounds within cordyceps that in Western scientists have identified as the compounds that are likely the things that that are giving you the the boost in performance and stuff, right? And so they take these compounds out, and a lot of cordyceps supplements will be like, "This is has this much concentration. This is all we're focused on." Whereas Four Sigmatic is like, we're extracting the entire the entire thing, and they're doing it with, through what's called a dual extraction process, hot and cold, where you're getting like the full of everything that's in that particular product. And I think that's the way you should take, Mm -hmm. you know, herbs and plants and stuff. I think you should take them in that way because there's things that we haven't identified yet. Look, herbs and plants and supplements and those types of forms have been used for thousands of years. It's only recently that we've learned to extract and, and standardize and take out these specific things. And I think that there's a benefit to that for acute issues and illnesses, but for like general health and performance, I think there's more benefit in the whole the whole plant, oh, the whole right. mushroom. Because we don't know. Yeah. There's so much about the plant that we don't know, and there's still so much about our gut that we don't know. To think that they're not, you know, inversely related to each other is silly to me. Yeah, yeah. You got it, you got it. Or think, just directly related. Or yeah, or directly related yeah, to yeah. it for that matter. I think yeah. that I think that for sure having the whole foods are, is gonna be the route. But that's I think that's why what's gonna happen with supplements is supplements, the whole performance side and the hype shit. I think we're going to see that start to yeah, die. Yeah. I think we're going to see mm. it start to slow. I agree. And, and, and maybe it'll it'll hang around there for your elite, elite athletes that have already dialed in all their vitamins, dialed their nutrition, and so sort of maybe they'll take it. But mm-hmm. I think once we really hone in on your people's deficiencies and we have this ability to give them that immediate feedback so they know, oh, I'm deficient in these vitamins and I can take those today, but then maybe tomorrow I'm fine, you know? Mm -hmm. Once we have that feedback and then we can can start to measure the performance, the increased performance from them, I think it's going to trump the the average Jane or Joe who's not doing that stuff and is just taking it. Going on the whole foods kind of idea, it would be super awesome. And this is already kind of happening just based off of like people steering a little bit more towards quality versus just cheap, you know, price points or whatever, where, you know, company, food companies will take that extra bit to out 
you know, perform and compete on a nutrient level, right? Like, yeah. Or like, you know, grow plants with, you know, better soil and like a better area, like better amounts of sunlight. Like they're, they're, they're taking all these factors um, to, to the next level and then they're presenting all that, Dude, you know, with transparency this is, to the consumer. People are, are wealthier today than they've ever been before. And so early on, the big one of the biggest selling points it's still a selling point don't get me wrong but it was the selling point with food was cost like had to be cheap had to be affordable well people have more money nowadays we have more money to spend and so now companies are selling you their beef by saying it's you know grass fed or it's humanely raised nobody gave a shit before yeah. how well you raise the cow i just i just Everybody's care that turning a blind eye yeah, yeah i'm yeah, buying yeah. a steak and it's on my plate you know, now and oh, fair trade, and we're paying our workers, and you know the right wages, and you know these are all selling points now because yeah. people now there's more money, it's more competition, and people want like quality, or they want to at least feel like they're getting better quality. Is, mm-hmm. is the point, and so the whole market continues to move in that direction. I, I I definitely see that going with supplements. Supplements were shit, and a lot of them still are shit, but they were really shit when I was a kid. They were. Who knows what I took? <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's yeah. why we're all messed up. I mean, Dude. think about it, like how many heavy metals and like everything, all all the rest of the shit we're finding now and like products that we think are legit, like right now, uh, versus like what we were taking back in the day. Who the fuck knows? Bro, it was what such was a, in the stuff we we're taking? Dude, it was such a scam. Ten fifty. It still is a scam. It was yeah. a huge scam. It's Ten like fifty years baking ago, baking powder oh. and like boner pill. Bro, powder. did you do you ever do you ever remember looking at the back of you guys took weight gainers right back yeah. in the day? Yeah, so yeah, I used yeah. to take my my go to was Mega Mass. 2000 <laughs> sometimes i remember that one mega yeah. mass or mega mass destroyed mass. me the name alone it's like what is it it's like a video game right mega dump is yeah. a, that, mega that mass 2000 or 3000 or 4000 okay but you know what i figured hey at least i was it's mega at least i was smart enough to figure this out i bought mega mass 4000 i'm like oh fuck this is way better yeah and you open it up and you the, the serving size was twice as big i'm like you fuckers <laughs> You just gave me Mega Mass 2000 with a bigger <laughs> serving. I remember literally like adding it up and be like, it's the same thing. Here's your sand shovel. Yeah, Mega Mass. Oh, look, they still have Mega Mass 5000 now. Oh, wow, it's <laughs> Holy shit, upgrade. upgrade. Wow, uh. So I used to do uh, Mega Mass. Uh, who made that? It was Weeder. This is not the right company. This is, a, this is yeah, a, used to, Maybe they sold off yeah, the name. They might have. It was Weeder. So I had Mega Mass 2000, 3000, or 4000. Or I'd have the, the what's that other brand? They made Rip Fuel. Yeah. Oh, uh, ABB? ABB? No, 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 no. Uh, it a- was a big American something. No, it was a it was a big company. I can't believe I can't remember the name. They they sold everything in, Give me the in, colors. in glass bottles. Yeah, oh, 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 uh, oh, Twin Labs. Twin Labs. Twin Labs. <laughs> so Twin Labs. We should play like supplement yeah, trivia. Yeah. Yes. Like old supplement brands yep. that we used to take. Two hundred dollars to <laughs> so you, sir. Twin Lab had a weight gainer that I would take. I can't remember the name. So I would do that one, Mega Mass. Serious Mass. Look at that yeah, one. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you weren't serious before with Mega. But you ever re- look at the back of them and look at the labels? Mega Serious Ultra. Yeah. So I'd look at this Mega Mass or this whatever one from Twin Lab, and it'd say, you know, a, by the way, the servings in the on the bottle, it's always mixed with whole milk. That's how they got to 2,000 calories. Because without 2,000, it was like 900 calories. You have to mix it with whole milk. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. it was like 16 <laughs> ounces or that's, 20 ounces of like... Uh, and two lazy. tablespoons yeah. of butter. That's yeah. some lazy shit yeah. right there. Actually, D- Doug, Doug, you have it up. Scroll down. I want to see the f- nutrition facts for a second. So 1,270 calories. Look at that. And... Uh, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Look at look at serving size seven round scoops. Yeah, yeah. seven, yeah, seven, seven, seven round scoops. Oh, oh my 50, god! Look at this ten servings in the container. How big is the container, Doug? Scroll up again, bro. Wait a second, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. You have to break this down first so people seven understand. Seven scoops. You're already a quarter of the way down. Okay, yeah. hold on a second. This is a twelve. Okay, this is today. By the way, they've reformulated this. It was worse when I was a kid. Twelve pound bag of Mega Mass four thousand. Okay, a twelve pound bag. 10 servings. 16. 16, sorry. 16 servings. In the whole bag. In 12 pounds. Well, look at, look at, okay. <laughs> what are you, you blending? Kayla, listen, listen. It's like a bucket. And a, if you a, take 1,270, <laughs> like okay, if you take mixer. 1,270 and you divide that by seven, it's about 150, about 140, 150 gram, or 150 calories per scoop, which is your basic standard Way way is normal. Your name, your normal way scoop is about 110 to 130 gram or 30 calories per scoop with about 10 grams of protein. So when you look at this, this is basically 
seven times that. That's all it is. It's it, well, that's actually worse because there's only fifty. Yeah, it is worse. You're right. Yeah. There's less protein, so they, well, they're getting away with giving right. you less yeah, protein. You have to add that whole milk. <laughs> it's fro- It's fifty grams of protein for a 1270 gram awful ratio awful ratio terrible but so when i was a kid and took it because now it's now if you look at it now it's 250 grams of carbs per serving and 25 grams of sugar so they've tried to take out minimize the sugar yeah Yeah, and what they've done is they've just put a a low amount for that they've just put in a shit ton of maltodextrin probably Uh, yeah this is top one yeah maltodextrin so maltodextrin is a complex carb i'm using quotes here but it's not necessarily super healthy for you when i was a kid it was 250 grams of carbs and it was 150 grams of sugar (laughs) <laughs> it was all dextrose. Yeah. Like they just yeah. threw that shit in there to give you all those calories. Oh, Pixie dust. It was terrible. Yeah. That was probably single handedly what ruined my gut. Those supplements right yeah, there. Bro. Right? I mean, that had to cause damage. Yeah. Because like the first ingredient in them. So now it's like advanced protein blend. There's whey and some casein. Back then it was like uh, powdered milk, probably was the first. Like, Doug, will you pull up Cell Tech the same way? I would, I'd like to look at the back of that. Oh, Cell Tech oh, is Celtech. because I took 70 that religiously. Grams, 75 grams of sugar. Yeah, the sugar. Oh, in my that, God. I yeah. used to love. We, we, oh, man, my buddy's oh, yeah, the, the fruit punch or the, the grape. Oh, let's see how much uh, they've creatine. changed this because the label looks way different than what it used to look like. Let's see how different the, yeah, the Cell Tech sugar is. You know, we used to eat. Remember, when they have a loading phase over so the first week. Yeah. You're taking like yeah. five times the amount. Yeah. You, like <laughs> six scoops a day. Yeah. <laughs> like I remember my buddies and I, we, we were like, we were, well, fuck, we were 18, 19 years old. And I remember working down the gym, being like, fuck, dude, this stuff works so good. Like, I put on five pounds, dude. How much you put on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you know what like, I used to take? I should have just had fucking six water. candy yeah. bars a day. We got <laughs> yeah, to gotta make sure we give uh, Twin Lab a shout out. Gainer's Fuel. That's what I used to take from Twin Lab. Gainer's, <laughs> Gainer's fuel. fuel. And then I bought Metrics. You guys remember Metrics? Man. You guys remember that? No, Metrics? No, I don't. You don't remember know. Metrics? You're the supplement Look, king. Wait, I'm going to sugar here. What's the sugar? Oh, wow. They're down to 15 grams. What? That is totally different. It used to be 75 way, grams of, of there sugar. There was way more than that. Yeah, they definitely cut you back. You guys on. don't remember metrics, Doug? Can you look up metrics? I know Doug took metrics. I Met RX. Like, yes, yes, I do. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes, I yes, just, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was an old school. So there it is. So that one, I remember they sold me on the fact that their protein was special. That was, dude. <laughs> it looks like Slim Fast. It is Slim Fast. Isn't it like, Slim it, Fast? It's like, like the same fl- thing. Yeah, it is like Slim Fast. Oh, God, man. pure, pure. Uh, Maybe that pure was trash. the pivot. Maybe that, like, out of that, it created Slim Fast. No. No, Metrics was created by Dr. Connolly. This is here's here's the the, the you wonder- remember that here's the wonderful things about God, having you have like a random s- memory. I think it was Doctor Weird S- Doug. Check out check on this. Commercials. Is it Doctor Scott Connolly? I think his name was, and he invented. Do you remember the doctor that invented? I think the so. Fucking gainer <laughs> I shake? think so. Oh my god! And he invented bro. uh Metrics. It's a wonder I ever win an argument, yeah. dude. Like he was literally a fan <laughs> of supplements. I mean, yeah. I, I get it. Now, he invented uh, met- Metrics, and it was the, yep, it is, Dr. Scott Connolly. Oh, my God, dude. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. He invented Metrics <laughs> because, I don't know how I remember that. He was an anesthesiologist, by the way. Fuck you. He's like, like I'm a doctor. That we're like watching protein. Bo Jackson. He's like, yeah, dude, this doctor, yeah. you know, Scott Connolly. That's like, uh, he's my hero. No, but, but how funny is that? He's an anesthesiologist, which you have to be very smart to be one, yeah. but you don't know shit about nutrition or anything like that. <laughs> Invented by a doctor. That's all you, you needed. Know? You need a lab coat yeah. and uh, you know so, PhD. And what the way they sold metrics was it was this special protein, you know, blend that was super anabolic and it was just special and patented. It was patented for metrics, and so I bought that stuff and I gained nothing from it. <laughs> it actually tasted decent, though, although my 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 <clears throat> taste buds are a little thrown off from all the supplements I've taken. Since I was a kid. So I, I think they're going to die. I mean, I really do. I think they're going to head. Well, no, I shouldn't say die. They're going to go away because it's forever. People are going to always gonna there want will the always pill. be a market. Yeah. yeah. But, but I do think it's going it, to diminish for I do. sure. I think it's going to shift. I, I agree. Think I think we're going to start seeing more and more people. I mean, this is why I remember it was almost two years ago when I told you guys one of the guides I really wanted to write is I wanted to come up with a, a very generic supplement for your needs right yes a a guide called supplement for your needs and just basically give people an idea like for example like you know do you get x amount of hours of sunlight per week and like if so if not this could be potential you could be deficient in vitamin d do you get x amount of these fruits you know you could be in not me prescribing not us telling you this is what you need but at least helping people in the direction of assessing their own Mm -hmm. diet their own Mm -hmm. habits their own patterns and then knowing like at least what direction they should start to look into. And of course, 
I'm saying that you should go through Whole Foods and fill those. And that's, I would love it to be like questionnaire like that, the deficiency you could potentially have, and then the foods that that, that are highest in those in those nutrients. Mm-hmm. I are think there, it would be such a powerful yeah, guy. Yeah. Are there companies, I know that they do blood tests and stuff for, um, you, you know, what what allergies and all these kinds of things. So they, they, there's companies that have to exist that kind of so match they, you to that. So right? they do, but here's the, here's we the, don't have a, We don't have the technology we, to measure not that well, well, yet, right? Well, it's so, the daily individual variance is so yeah. high, right? Yeah. Like you could, just like I was saying before. Yeah, you change that on, on Right, right. If, if, if uh, you know, if you hadn't had fish all week or maybe two weeks in a row and that's the most you haven't had fish, you could show that you have deficiencies somewhere, but then all of a sudden you have a week where you have all of it, it's going to show that you have maybe a surplus. So yeah. I think it's more like, and that's why I would want to make like a guide of just like mm-hmm. you know if you're somebody who always skips these foods like there's a really good chance that you could be missing these things yeah you know? yep, yep yep so i think that would be that i think sense. real time is going to be very important we need you know that type of data is also the ability to collect real time data is also going to give give us complete breakthroughs in uh, how the human body reacts to foods and stress and thoughts and a- exercise and all these things because uh, up until now it's been kind of <laughs> difficult but when these pro- th- think about it this way if they want to test real-time data on you now, you go to a lab, you do an activity, they take a blood test right away. And it's not 100% real-time, right? It's like you do your thing and then you go to get the blood test. Right. And the the sample size is small. You have to you have to have so many people signed right. up for the study, it's expensive. There's a little bit of a self-selection bias, you know, the amount of the, the type of people that tend to sign up for those studies Already tend to fall into a, right? yeah, a particular category. Imagine when this becomes uh, available to the consumer. Now we have just the average consumer, millions of people wearing these devices. Now you can aggregate that data and you can get real. And I bet you we're going to blow our minds. I bet you we're going to get all this data and we're going to be like, oh, we were totally wrong on that. Mm -hmm. Or this is how these foods actually, you know, how people react to them. Or look what happens here when people work out this particular way in the morning. I think it's going to blow our minds because I think a lot of, we we know a lot, but we know there's so much more we don't know. It's not even funny. Oh, yeah. And I think having millions of people wear, wear things like that and be able to ca- you know get gather that data. Oh, I agree. Oh, it's gonna be life changing. Oh, I think I it's gonna agree. be totally life changing. Of course, you always have the the will people follow it type of. You know, well, problem. that's that's why there still will be a market for the quick fix bullshit because those people want to yeah, be sold. Yeah. That deep down they want to be sold the bullshit. Oh yeah, you know? so yeah, they want to believe that that's going to get them all ripped and shredded in six weeks. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But we, I mean, we've seen the market shift. I mean, we've we've seen it shift already just in the uh, small time that we've been doing mind pump and. I think we're that, causing it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, 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 it's what we tell not people. Sorry, we're not. We're yeah. just we're just calling it as we yeah, see we it. Right, right. And then it sounds like, oh, <laughs> how'd you guys know? <laughs> Orchestrating. It's it. right there, yeah. dude. Adam, you must be uh, you must be happy. I didn't think you were going to bring it up. Oh, dude, I didn't, oh, think, I didn't think you were going to. I didn't think you were going to bring I it gotta up. I got to bring it up. I uh, saw it, dude. You're the man for bringing it so up. Of course, bro. Yeah. Here's a here's a deal. Like, okay, so here's here's the 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 article I sent to you guys. Yeah. And I did a post of it on him on my Instagram. <laughs> so China's uh, president, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Xi Jinping. I hope I'm saying it right. He announces plans to open up China's economy, which is a great thing. But this includes lowering tariffs for automobiles and enforcing the legal intellectual property of foreign firms. And and they charge a shit ton on American products going in. So he goes up there and says, we're going to start lowering these tariffs and stuff. Trump... Trump's little negotiating. His fucking, bishop just slid right yeah. over and just put him in check. You know what's... You know what's so here's, interesting. Man. Well, here's the thing. Like, I think that Trump is perceived as crazy enough to do exactly what he says he's going to do. Mm-hmm. So these world leaders are like, oh, we better... Yeah, we better... He we kind of means it. This is crazy. Yeah. This is... he. I mean... That's look, why he... I mean, love him, hate him. I'm not... I didn't vote for him. I'm not pro him, anything like that. But at the end of the day, like... It's probably what the country needed after having such a pushover before. Yeah, he's, mm. he's, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's he's coming across, because this is like the second or third time now where he's done something, and I'm like, what are you doing, dude? And and then, you know, we talked about this on the episode. We talked about it, and we all speculated. I mean, because I said even, I said, you know, the only thing I could see that he may be doing is 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 c- catering to his base or and or potentially using it as leverage, right? Like as uh, negotiating, like... You come to the table, and now I've got this piece, and I thought, well, you know, that's assuming that he's, you know, trying to do the right thing or whatever. But he seems to be doing that, and the motherfucker, tell you what, man, he might, he might just well be the best negotiator we've had since, so since Reagan. Business, yeah, those business tactics coming into play. That's it's exactly what he's what he's doing because you could see, like, 
he threatened to raise taxes on companies that had stuff overseas. You know, like if you open up plants overseas to bring in money or whatever, mm-hmm. and everybody's like, well, that's, you know, of course, that's going to raise the price of goods and whatever. And we dumb economics. Sure enough, companies are like, oh, we're opening new plants. Oh, and then he lowered, you know, corporate tax rate. We're opening all these, you know, new new businesses and new locations in America. Now he's doing this thing with China. It's cracking me up. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely cracking me up. And this is a good thing. If China the funny thing about China is there's so much more free market than any other communist country in history. They 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 see the power of the free market and how much wealth it can create. And so they're like like there's no comparison between them and the Soviet Union when it comes to markets. Now the China's not free market, but way more free market than than the Soviets were. And it's such a good thing when the world opens up its markets and makes it easy and eliminates barriers for for trade. Because think about it, that's all, on the way here, as I was driving, I was thinking about this and I was like, how can I explain this so people get it? Because I think a lot of people in their mind think, you know, oh no, we need to work with just America and protect Americans no, and save America no. and, you know, uh, you know, forget other countries. Here's the thing. If you want a product to be made or something to be done efficiently, do you think you'll have a better potential result from being able to pull from a million people or from being able to pull from 10 million people, right? right? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So you could shrink that down all the way. We could literally say, you know, there's four of us in here right now, right? Me, Adam, Justin, and Doug. We're going to do everything. We're not going to hire no one else. We're going to do not do everything else. It's just going to be on us because we want all the work and we want all the whatever. Is that as effective as us saying, we should let other people who are better at these things do them and let people compete and see what happens and, and end up employing and working with you know, potentially thousands of people. That's what happens when, when markets open up. You have countries that are, you know, exceptionally good at some things, you know, creating the products that other countries buy and other countries doing other things. And, and it just opens up markets, drives down prices, increases quality. So the fact that China's doing this is excellent. And it looks like Trump's gamble, it's too early to say, but maybe maybe working, which yeah, is yeah. hilarious. <laughs> it makes yeah. me laugh because so many people hate him. Like, <clears throat> yeah. like I'll look at his policies and I'll be like, you know, good, bad, or whatever. There's a lot of mixed feelings out there, I'm sure. Oh. Just like confused. Dude, there's a, half the country thinks he's Hitler. Like yeah. literally thinks I, he's oh, Hitler. Oh, I know. So every time this happens. <laughs> so which, I've which, seen it. Which is so, <laughs> which, can I tell you something right now? People are passionate. Can I tell you something right now? No, there, there, we, there's only one Hitler, Okay. We haven't had a, a president that's yeah. anywhere near Hitler. I wish we could, yeah, make an example of something else. You even know, it's just getting old. Even FDR, who you know, put the you know the, the comparing Japanese every, in comparing camp. everything to Hitler and cigarettes, right? Those Come are like, on, yeah. like, <laughs> the we, two, we need some new the, the go-to. He's not yeah. Hitler, you know. You new don't go-tos. like him. I get it, but he's not an evil psychopath, or at least he hasn't proven to be. But you know, <laughs> not yet. it makes me laugh because he does something like this, and then it just. Makes them even more mad. You know what, <laughs> what, do you, hey, what do you speaking of China? What do you yeah. think of the the whole social ranking that's been? In, it's already in place, huh? I told you. I, told you. It's ha- I mean, they went that's from like some scary shit. That's very scary. It's crazy. I can't believe. Yeah, you know, but it's it's control. It's it, obviously like this is another way that they can just monitor everybody and and get everybody to sort of play into their constructed game that well, they have in front of them. What's trippy is. They're, you're, they're going to be able to show all kinds of stats of lower deaths, lower crime, lowered all this stuff from that. I wouldn't trust their statistics, but you're right. Oh, yeah. yeah. But right. I wouldn't trust their yeah, statistics. Yeah, right. no, I'm not exactly. I'm not saying, but they will be able to show that. You know that, right? I mean, I was <sighs> reading that article of some of the things like, you know, if you're not ranked high enough, like you can't fly, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, like if you're a bad. And if you're friends with someone who's ranked low, your <laughs> ranking goes down. Right. That's what they're, that's the, that's the crazy part is they're, they're. Gonna, but we talk about this all the time. Your, your true net worth, your net value, your net everything is, 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 is the collection of, or the average of the five people you spend the most time with. They're controlling that for you. They're helping you out. They're like, listen, indirectly, like <laughs> we're going to put get, a number you, on that. You Sal yeah. need to get some better friends because two of your friends are bringing your score down, dude. Like level the fuck up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're literally living a video game. Over dude. There. Yeah, I mean, I'm. It's, is this bad? Is it bad that I I'm so intrigued by it and interested and glad no. and glad China's doing no, well, it? I don't want anything, the first time it's anything, ever happened. Right? I don't want anything yeah. to do with it for us. But I'm very curious to see what it does. Well, I, I, yeah, I want to see all the ways people are going to manipulate it. 
you know, like I want to see all the people in power that are going to like figure out how to. Oh, like hackers? Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. To, to gain system? number like advantages or you put know, people scores it, lower. They might kill you for something. It may actually. That. Of course they yeah. will do that. Though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll get like. Anytime you, you put a value on something, somebody's going to hack into it. It may actually backfire because think about it this way. Imagine if this is countrywide. That's a massive country. Their wealth is increasing, which is going to give them more trouble anyway because as their wealth increases, people are going to want more and more autonomy, more freedom. But imagine this. Imagine you have countrywide, all these people on the social network. There's going to be, although it'll be a minority, it's still going to be a sizable percentage of people that are going to be lower in the rankings. Mm -hmm. Like w once you can see that you have allies, like, oh, there's there's a million of us that are like this or, or 10 million. Because yeah. that's a country. How many billions of people are in China? Right. It's an incredibly massive country. That could that could backfire. People could actually use it in a way to revolt or right. band together and say, no, you know, I don't, I, it may not be. Well, may, then they'll just manipulate thing. the numbers, right? They'll see that like too many people are, are forming a group within this number category. And so they'll just like start upping, you know, class. It's just like this weird, like, to me, it looks like old, like class system, you know? So yep. they're, they're just like, they're having control of like who has, you know, power, who doesn't have the power. And they kind of probably shift it uh, in their favor. Dude, like always, you, right? in, in, in you, when you create classes like that and you create a disparity long, big enough and you oppress one side long enough, that's like a recipe for disaster. That's how I kind of feel like that we kind of already naturally do do this. That's it's how just, people get beheaded. It's just kind of organizing it more. We don't do. You, don't you feel like we Yeah, kind of there's natural hierarchies. People naturally, <clears throat> you know, uh, structure themselves in ways or, you know, mm -hmm. s someone may be higher on the hierarchy than other people. That's just what humans do. I mean, We've you could argue this. that that money already naturally does this. It's just it a, it's just an yeah. example of exchange, but the, right? Like, but the difference is when you start to feel forced by it and you start to feel oppressed by it. Yeah. Well, then, somebody behind the control board yeah. like, behind that, that's, that's what creeps me out, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. versus just letting it happen as like they're competing naturally. It's going to be, I wonder if they're going to eliminate money through the, you imagine that if they'll just use this, that's the currency. Eliminate, yeah, that'll totally. become the currency. With crypto? Fine. Well, yeah, it doesn't really make sense because you, you have a number, you obviously, you get a, a, like access to certain things, certain <clears throat> places, uh, you know, certain amenities. Like it just makes sense that like if your number value is already I, as such, I really think that we're gonna, we're going to head into it. I think we're going to kind of go back to like a barter type system, dude. I really do. I believe cryptocurrency is going to come around, which is going to well, crypto's look not barter. Barter would be trade product for product, yeah, which, but it, that's got limitations. So clunky. Big well, it's big limitations. That's because, why. It's, but I think it's going to work in conjunction with with like crypto. Well, person to person, yeah. Well, the, crypto's the, still you mean cutting person out person. all middlemen. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. crypto's still money. Because you don't want barter. Because what happens with barter is if if Justin raises chickens and I you know make car tires. I may want to trade. I might want yeah, to buy wanna, some of his chickens, but he right. might not want any tires. Right. So money allows us to make right, that. The cryptocurrency would allow right. you to do that. Yeah. That's and so here's the thing: if you want to attack America, because there's you're not going to beat us with the military, you're not going to beat us. Let's uh, not give them ideas. Economic. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. Here's the blueprint. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, terrorists. I, you think I'm yeah. the first one that said this? No, I know. I, 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 it'll be our money. Attack our money. Yeah. You create an alternative currency that becomes the world's reserve, then uh -huh. we're fucked. Yeah. You know, now all of our debt is, kills us. So anyway, um, other news. Uh, so TechCrunch, you guys ever read TechCrunch? Yeah, mm -hmm. all the time. Okay, so they're talking about these cameras. I'm going to try and open up the article. They've developed cameras that are almost microscopic that can record. What? Uh-huh. That small? Yeah, so I'm going to pull up the article right here. So these yeah. are, these are oh a, under a millimeter wide. Whoa! Are you yes. serious? No and they're, and they're, yes, and they're powered by light, so the light that comes in will power it. What the and hell? The, and they're and they're doing uh, fifteen frames per se per second already. So the type of quality that you'll see is like this. Whoops, sorry. There you go. See that? Whoa. Which is not bad with a under one millimeter size camera. Wow! Wow! Now think of the you guys getting your it looks Tim, like an old newspaper. Yeah, I wonder something. how many people, how many Tim Foil hats are going to be you know bought now after this. Are you kidding me? You just throw one of those things like you can't find it, dude. A camera that's under do? a millimeter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You put that everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my god, it's going to be crazy. Uh, people are going to be watching everybody. What are you going to do with that? It's you can't creepy. stop that shit, oh, dude. Man. It's going to be so wild. Damn it! It'll be like dust. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Someone's gonna come in and just chew, like, yeah. and then he, all of a sudden you got cameras. Yeah, all you over put you. like four cameras in your mouth and you sneeze yeah. somewhere. Oh, sorry. All right, I'll see you guys later. Like four cameras in the corner. Yeah. We might as well start now. Just 
film yourself doing everything. What do they have? Do they do they have it priced yet? What's it? No, no, no. It's not available yet. This okay. is just this was uh, uh, created who, at the University say, of is, Michigan. Is it, oh, is it a company? Do we know? No, no, no. It's a University of Michigan. Some research that they did over there and they created this. But I mean. Dude, there, it so, wasn't too long ago when like spy cameras, like you go to buy one of these little tiny things, like it had like um like it was in a flower or something. Like that was a cool thing, you yeah, know. Yeah. Like the magic stores, you're like, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, they'll never see this, yeah. you know. It's like, <laughs> yeah, this in you, the lapel. This of one your you coat. literally can't yeah. see. Like I could put it in front of you, and be like, bro, do you see that camera right there? Yeah, no, no, a millimeter wide is like no, it's like a hair. That's a nail. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. a nail, like your fingernail. Like yeah. that's like you know what so they can do with that. And this is this is the sci-fi in me coming out, right? They could actually like sew that, like all that, and create like a fabric, and and now like your whole invisibility, oh, is possible, right? What, so oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it's what an invisibility you, no, I'm cloak. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. So remember explain, watching? Explain this. Theory. Do you remember watching Predator? Yeah. With the okay, remember the alien and how he was kind actually, of actually no, that's a monitor, so it'd have to have like a monitor screen. So that's different. That's but it's still, yeah. So you that's have fine. the camera. Basically, the camera shoots like whatever's outside of you, and then it projects on on your cloak. Or whatever so you remember, wearing. remember uh, Predator, where he's yeah. kind of invisible, yeah. but yeah. you can kind of see him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they already have technology that they're working on like this, where you wear this cloak or whatever, and what it's doing is it's what? Re- it's real to be invisible. Yeah, so dude. Like seriously, it's recording. Awesome. So it'll be recording what's behind you and projecting in front of you, so it looks like you're looking through me. Yeah. So it's not exactly invisible. No, you just like you'll Predator, see you like can a see. form of. Yeah. That's pretty person, close to invisible, but, uh, though. Yep, yep. If I can get Predator invisible, I'm fucking stoked, dude. <laughs> yep, Predator yep. invisible is like, invisible yes, enough. Yes, it's happening. Yeah, yeah, no one's noticing that shit. Uh, no, no. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that, that great? That yes. Yeah. I yeah. want one of these. Yeah. How cool would that be? I'm into it. Where would you go first? Uh, first place you go. Where would you go? Woman's locker room. Oh my well, god! Yeah, well, I, I know. I'm just saying what Justin was thinking. I could see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see. I was trying screen. to think of another answer yeah, to like, not be so that creepy. A, <laughs> that's a, that's the 14 like, year old yeah, version. Uh, yeah. I, I was like, if, uh, uh, if you had an invisible cloak, where are you going? For reals. For reals. Yeah. No. no I want to go inside. somewhere. Where Although like, I wouldn't have ju- I wouldn't meeting. judge you if you answered no, that. No. No. I want to. I want to. I would be like Alex Jones and go to one of those like secret like like skull and bones you know type of things just to see what their their crazy rituals just hide in the corner yeah just be there and just be like oh shit that's what they're doing you know what i would do with that shit 100 percent. if i could buy an invisibility cloak i would just use it to scare the fuck out of everyone i I wouldn't use it i wouldn't i don't care there's there's nowhere i want to go that i don't want to be seen i really don't care but i would love imagine how scary that would be i put that shit on i fucking hide next to your car you have no idea, <laughs> bro. I you mean, you open the, the door. ultimate like. I give got me a you, heart. Bitch. You open the, I just <laughs> yeah. grab your ankle. Pff, ah, oh, gonna, shit, you viral know. video waiting to happen. That'd be so fun. Yeah. All right. Bring on the invisible bird. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Natural Health Warrior. If my form on every lift is garbage, should I still lift weights or just do correctional mobility work? So did they put Prime Pro there or did you put that, Doug? They mentioned Prime Pro, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, this is a great question. So It is a great question. So you guys know how a couple of weeks ago I was going, I went hiking with the kids a few places or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we went to the Pinnacles, one of my favorite places to go hiking, and when we first get there, another car pulls up with next to us, and out of the car come out these like classic gym bros. Oh yeah, you talked about this. Yeah, did I tell you guys on the yeah, show? Yeah, you yeah. told us. And did I tell you Yesterday. guys about the dysfunction? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, what Bro, a are you great that old where you're starting to repeat stories like an old like. Oh an, man, that's dad's. What that's a dad? Is that a dad? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Damn, that's dude. Old, that's that was yesterday. Yeah, we yeah, talked yeah, about this. Yeah. Yeah. I told you guys my memory's selective. <laughs> Adam so, got the ear hair. Yeah, you got he, losing memory. Right. Yeah. This guy remember. This guy remembers I mean, the fucking. I, I, I'm replacing my teeth. The chiropractor yeah. who made up protein 30 years ago. But <laughs> yeah, it's fucking. He was an it's very selective. He, he couldn't remember. He told just had a, He wasn't a chiropractor. <laughs> 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 I remember that. Oh, no. Man. So. Uh, so no. That was a great example of what happens when you have imbalances or suboptimal movement mm-hmm. patterns. And then you just go lift heavy weights. You end up creating this shell around your dysfunction. You end up building a very strong muscular 
dysfunctional body, which is it's not a good thing because yeah. Dude, the other you're creative- building on a broken system and yeah. you're building around it. You're creating the shell around it. So like, l- let me put it this way: athletes are a great example of this too. Oh, yeah, such a great this example. Is, I mean, I, I remember the best at I remember the first time we were hanging out with Brink and he yeah. and we were we were kind of prodding him with questions like this, like, "Hey, when you when you saw, I remember I don't remember Justin or I or who asked asked Brink this, but we were asking like because he deals with so many professional athletes. Yeah, like, do you see some like crazy mechanics? Like these guys are just like so they got. He's like, oh, it's the opposite. Yeah. He's like, they're the most fucked up and the most dysfunctional because they've just learned from an early age how to to cheat, you know, and to be able to work their way through it. And so it's crazy when you think about that, that uh, some of these athletes, I mean, we had some, we had somebody shoot with us not that long ago and he, athlete, collegiate level athlete, incredible shape. And we were, we were, they were doing exercises. And I remember like Sal and I looking at each other because oh we were like, Oh fuck! Are we gonna be able to use these videos? Like I know the, his mechanics are not very good at all, man. Yeah, the balance, and right? Like some jumping things. I was like, Ooh. right. You just you look at you look at somebody sometimes, and you think that because they look buff or they look lean or they look in great shape that they're gonna have good biomechanics. And a lot of times that's not the case. And this is such a great question along those. Sometimes lines. what happens is you have an imbalance. You have poor recruitment patterns or suboptimal, you know, patterning. And you become really strong within it. Sometimes that sets you up for a more catastrophic uh, injury, mm-hmm. because if I have a shoulder dysfunction, but then I create all this muscle and strength around it, and then I go and I throw a baseball and throw my shoulder out, <coughs> it's a big fucking injury. It's a massive tear. Yeah, it's a big problem. You can produce even more force to you know a, a, a less favorable recruitment pattern. It's like now you're adding more force and yeah. more torque in that direction. The, the body, we've said this so many times, the body's an adaptation machine. And, and when you exercise or move a lot in a particular way, your body's goal is to become as efficient and effective at that movement as possible, given the context of your current ability to move. So here's a great example. Uh, I haven't used this one in a long time. If I've been typing on a, a, on a keyboard with my two pointer fingers for the last 10 years, like that's how I type with my two index fingers. I can get pretty, yeah, I can get pretty fast. I'm probably, I can probably be pretty fast with two fingers, but I wouldn't get nowhere as fast as I could with my, with all my fingers using, doing the proper way. But the problem is when I switch from my hunt and peck, you know, index fingers to using my whole hand, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And in the first month or three months, I'm going to be slower with the quote unquote faster way than I was with the slower way because my body had become so efficient with what I had given it. But over time, the potential is so much higher with using all my fingers that after six months or however long, not only did I, I surpass my previous best, but I surpassed it by a long shot. Which this is what makes it so difficult for people is because of that. Because there is going to be a little bit of a setback. Like if, you've, if you're if you already able to exercise and you think you're an able body already, but then inside you know maybe you have poor recruitment patterns or you have bad mechanics, you could just say, fuck that, I care about leaning out, I want to look a certain way, so I'm going to burn fat, I'm going to build muscle and get to a point where you're feeling good. Not a lot of people want to accept that, fuck, you mean to tell me yep. I have to do these boring type of exercises and movements for potentially months? or even some people years mm-hmm. before I should really even be progressing so, myself with heavy weight. And this is why if I, I feel for athletic trainers, uh, pro, for professional athletes, because if you get a pro athlete who's competing at the highest level, their bodies have been so good at compensating and becoming efficient at whatever they're giving them, you know, whatever, uh, you know, recruitment patterns they have or whatever, that if an athletic trainer, let's say I get a pro basketball player and they come in and they're like, I want to hire you. Well, my question is going to be, is it for improving your performance in basketball now or later or health, on right, yeah. or much later on? Because right now, if it's to improve your, your, your performance right now, and if I take your shoes off and I see your feet are all fucked up and I try working on those, we're going to have to scale you way back. Oh, you're going to regress them. You're going to fuck your athlete. And, and then you're going to suck performance at, is going to go down. You're yeah. going to suck at your sport because you've been so good at it with these, this, these compensations for so long. So it takes a second to take a step back. However, if I know that the goal is long term, I know that in a year – not only will we get you back to where you were, but we'll get you even further because the potential of your performance is highest when your body is moving in the most optimal way it can move. So, so I'll, re, I'll, refer, I'll say that again. When you look at your total potential, how much you can bench or squat or deadlift or how fast you can run or how awesome you could look and all these different things, there are potentials that, you, that your body has and you can reach a much higher potential 
if your body moves in a more optimal way in all those things. Now, you may just be really good at moving badly, and your body's learned how to do it uh, in a very efficient way mm-hmm. to the point where, look, if you have a 600-pound deadlift, but you have you know bad ankle mobility or maybe your hip mobility isn't good, we're going to work on that. You're not going to be able to deadlift 600 pounds with with, well, with the new recruitment pattern. It's going to take a while. Well, think about what you're, the direction you just went with these with a power lifter. Like how often or how how many times have you guys seen this? I know I've trained a ton in my, in my life or in my time being a trainer is these guys that you know all through their 20s and 30s were a power lifter, you know, and they were a strong power lifter, pulling five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds up off the floor. And, you know, she could show me pictures of them doing that and trophies they won. And then I got a hold of them when they're 45 or 50 and they're a fucking mess. Yeah. Just broken. They're, yeah, broken. An absolute, absolute mess. And so that's just because they got really good. Like you said, they've had, they had dysfunction since day one and they just got really good at compensating for it and working through it. So you do, you have to ask yourself, now this person, natural health warrior, I'm assuming cares more about being healthy yeah. mm-hmm. and that's, and that's their goal. I would 100% would tell you to live in prime pro yeah yep. well yep. I, and i think the earlier you adopt these concepts the, the better right because now you're you're building off of something that you know has staying power has longevity um as far as like understanding your body on a way deeper level and connecting um to parts of your body that you know for most athletes even would remain dormant and they would re- revolve completely around these compensation patterns um, to get them through. And so, yeah, that is a struggle, like bringing an athlete that's already a high performer back to revisit, um, you know, some of these concepts is like that. That is, a uh, I feel for any coach or uh, athletic trainer Dude, that has to do that. You got to ask yourself, you know, what you're doing this for. So are you doing, are you, are you doing this because you want to maximize your performance, your health, your fitness, your aesthetics, or are you doing this because you're so afraid of taking even the most you know minuscule step back that you have to just maintain everything every single day? If that's who you are, that's a it's first of all it's a terrible place to live. I used to live there. I used to be so afraid of losing a half a pound on the scale that I never allowed myself to get lean. I never allowed myself to visit different training modalities or whatever because I was so scared of taking a step back. Sometimes, actually many times, steps back are what you need to leap forward. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, what's that saying? You know, uh, before an arrow can shoot forward, you have to pull it back. Or, you know, if you want to have a good running start to, you know, give yourself some space. It's the same thing here. Like if you dedicate, even if you just dedicated three months, just three months, if you said to yourself, okay, for the next three months, I may lose some strength in the gym and I'm going to tell you something right now, very few people are going to really change dramatically how their body looks, unless you're at a super high level. So most people, if you did three months of pure mobility and correctional work, you, the average person is going to look at you and think you look the same. So don't worry about like all of a sudden going out of shape. But if you dedicate three months and you can say, I'm going to sacrifice the next three months to focusing on improved movement, optimizing my mobility and my movement and recruitment patterns, and then you go back and start training like you used to and slowly ease into it. Watch where you're at in six months to a year. Well, I You'll would blow your mind. I would say too that you, uh, live in Prime Pro, but I also think that Prime would also be a great way. Fortification, to, sessions. yeah. Fortification sessions would be how you would progress Prime Pro or mm-hmm. to complement Prime Pro. So Prime Pro is basically the assessment test piece, right? It's been a while since we talked about mm-hmm. it, what exactly is Prime Pro, and Prime Pro is basically we are addressing every major joint in your body, and then we're looking at it. We give you a test, and then we give you movements to improve improve upon that, right? Yeah. Well, that's just those movements to improve on that. Well, then you have fortification sessions that we have within MAPS Prime, and those are de- uh, designed to solidify those good patterns and movements. They're actual creating. workouts. Right, they're yeah. actual workouts. So if you were still going to lift weights, what type of exercises that you should do that's going to complement your posture and get you and get you into better better posture. So here's what I recommend to uh, to some of the clients that I work with with because here's there is an order of things when you start working out you definitely need to work on optimizing your movement patterns before you focus on building you know big strength and, and muscle. You got to optimize because it's, it's like we got to we got to 
we got to learn be- the right way to you know utilize your mechanics and like what it even looks like first but in order to then add load and and really focus on building strength in that movement yep. if you're already telling us that you noticeably have bad form going into these lifts like it takes practice but you're not going to keep practicing a lift that you already have bad mechanics in like that doesn't make any sense no, like, you just- get, get it right first and whatever that takes and then keep practicing I, it. I know lots of people like this, the, lots of lifters who, you know, some of them are very well known and they're very strong and they'll do these lifts and they're power lifters or they work out all the time and they, they, they aren't moving optimally. And it goes, you know, one injury, then it's another injury, then it's another injury. And it's like one after another after another. And at some point you have to ask yourself like, okay, you know, First off, the injuries are going to set you back way more than three months of correctional exercise. So think that to yourself. Do you think correctional exercise is going to set you back more than hurting yourself? Definitely not. I promise you. Hurting yourself is going to, is going to, is going to do much more damage um, than, than just taking a few steps back with your intensity and your weight and focusing on optimizing your movement. But here's what I recommend to, to some of the clients I work with. When they start with me, I have them use Prime Pro based on movement defun- dysfunction, the joints that they've identified. But then I tell them to do the fortification sessions in Prime, and here's how I, did, I organize it. If they're, if they're not advanced, if they're beginners and they haven't worked out a lot, I'll have them do Zone 1 on Monday, Zone 2 on uh, Wednesday, and Zone 3 on Friday. And then Prime Pro you know, every day, you know, once or twice a day. For the advanced people, I have them alternate Zone 1, 2, and 3, Every, every day except for Sunday. So they go Monday zone one, Tuesday zone three, two, Wednesday zone three, and then they start over. One, two, three, Sunday off, and then they repeat. So they have more frequency, more training. You're not going to lose. Uh, you'll actually, you may actually build some muscles. Oh, yeah. if, you're doing the form. Form. if you're doing fortification with Prime, you mm-hmm. know, I could see if you're somebody who's training weights three, four times a week, and then you stop weights completely to go to just Prime Pro. But if you include, if you include the fortification sessions inside of, of Prime, I would argue that you could potentially even build some muscle along mm-hmm. the way. You'll definitely mm-hmm. keep yourself in good condition and shape. So that's the direction I would go. Next question is Cal Burton. This one's more for Sal. Do you think the free market has contributed to America's obesity rates? Food companies are driven to make better tasting and more addictive foods to increase profits. Why the yeah. fuck is this just for yeah. Sal? That's a, well, what does it matter? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is that Sal, just for? He's our, the only one that cares about markets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, right. the, the, uh, yeah obviously, uh, markets have contributed. So Yeah, but what's the alternative to that? Well, here's the thing. Like, <laughs> is there obesity problems in countries that are starving? <laughs> no. People don't typically die of obesity there. They usually die of, of starvation. Here's the thing about markets that is, uh, it, it's a side effect of markets. And it's not a negative side effect of markets. It just amplifies the potential negatives of people. And that's this. When you give people the ability to have whatever they want, you start to see um, you know, all the, all the, the, the dysfunction that humans have. Right. You start to see like the indulgences you, and it has nothing to do with markets. It has everything to do with the fact that people just, right. I would never want that to stop, man. I, because somebody else doesn't have self-control, I would not want that to, I wouldn't want my freedom to suffer. Mm-mm. My ability to say, you know what? Fuck it. I do want a piece of cake today. I haven't had one in a really long time. I've earned it. It's my fucking birthday, whatever it is. I want that. Like I wouldn't want to try and control that. That'd be silly. It's like it's like when we um, it, it's the same thing like when people complain about um, you know tabloid magazines or people will say oh there's too many liquor stores or whatever all the all these things do is they're just reflecting yeah. ourselves yeah. to us it's you, a response people want it obviously yes yeah. you know, and it's, it's we're it's, the ones driving it that way it's yeah. just a reflection and and I think what happens with a lot of people is they get so angry with the reflection of the mirror to them. That they think we need to impose laws to fix this, when in reality the fixing lies in, within each individual, within, yeah. within each person. So if you don't like, and here's like I'll give you guys a great example, and I, I'm I'm sure I'm going to piss some people off, and I hope I do with this one. But you have celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio who travels the world and talks about uh, climate change and how he's so concerned about pollution and climate change. Meanwhile, he's got a yacht that, uh, b- like, one cruise on that yacht is going to be a bigger carbon footprint than me, you, and, at, and Justin. Our whole life. Combine our entire life. <laughs> he has private jets. He's got mansions. He's got everything. And so here's the thing. When somebody says they care about something, don't necessarily believe what they're saying. Believe it if you see what they're doing. 
somebody who really gives a shit about the environment, they do you you could tell with the way they live. Yeah. You could tell by how they drive, you could tell by their home, you could tell by the clothes they the wear. Smell. When somebody yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe. They smell organic. Yeah. Yeah. If, when somebody cares about, Beat you know, uh, yeah. obesity or whatever, they're not trying to make everybody force everybody else to do things. You see how they live themselves. And that's really the best, you know, telling thing. But yeah, free markets give people more choice to be themselves, and that's just going to highlight uh, <clears throat> some of our you know, the, the natural aspects of, of humanity. It's oh. like, you know, people complaining about porn yeah. on the internet. Right. You know, ah, we need to make laws to stop all this porn. Uh, just stop, stop watching, watching porn. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely think both those things, I mean, the porn thing, the, the, I definitely think that the free market has contributed to it, but they, that's on us again. Mm-hmm. And, and you would, we would, none of us would want we that. We throw the gasoline out there on top of right, it. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And it, you just threw in the porn thing just there at the last second there, but that's the same thing too. Yep. It's like we're seeing all these things happening right now. We've we've speculated on that, that porn is definitely one of the big culprits of why people, fucking 20-year-old guys can't get boners anymore. But that doesn't mean that I would actually vote for Pornhub being shut down like that's who am I to say that? You know, what I'm saying if there's somebody because you know what we don't know for the for the five people that it, it made them obese, it could change somebody else's life. For the five people that can't that can't get a heart on anymore, it changed some five of the people's marriages for the better. Yeah, like there's so many there's so many positive plus, things that, that happen to all these things that nobody talks about either. So we we yeah. always. Whatever, whatever makes a better uh, you headline. You see the products that are emerging in the, the the change in grocery stores and the amount of organic products and you know sugar reduction and it's like it's just information too that that helps to combat um, and present new ideas, which then you know people sort of band around and start buying products in a different direction, and then that changes the market. So. Okay. It's, yeah. it's, it's a matter of We're getting, us you and the know, other thing, collectively doing something different. The other thing to consider, and this may be a little esoteric, but if we're trying to advance humanity um, and uh, advancing humanity in a, in, you know, in a positive way, right, where we all grow, we all grow independently, society grows, we learn things, you have to give people the freedom to make those choices and learn those things. And here's what's happening with obesity. Forever... It wasn't even an option to eat as much as you want and eat everything and have and be able to find flavors and tastes that you just couldn't even imagine. It just wasn't an option. So people didn't really, you know, when it came to dealing with obesity, that was like the ultra rich that kind of had to, to deal with that. The average person, that wasn't a, 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 a something that they could grow over. That wasn't something they even had to learn to control. In fact, if you know, like our grandparents, the generation of our grandparents, and that's not that long ago, by the way, in human history, it's not even a blink of the eye. Our grandparents w- grew up d- during famines. They grew up during times when there wasn't that much food, which is why if you ever watch grandparents try and feed your grandkids, or yeah. if you remember, they try to you, shovel it in. Yeah, it's like, like it's, it's never gonna. Yeah, yeah like come like back. It might, like it might go away in a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true because yeah. it wasn't Eat this now, Sonny. You might Bro, not have it next year. You don't even know, dude. You don't even know. Throwing food away. My oh grandma. My this is no joke. My grandma. What used to follow us around the house yeah. with food. I believe it. We, no, fall, she would have a bowl of pasta or whatever. While we were playing, she'd try and slip it in. And she was so proud that she could, oh, look, I made him eat another bowl of pasta. And everybody was like, oh, my God, you love him so much. It's so great. This, was, this is how that dysfunction was created from not having enough food. So what's happening now? Well, all of a sudden, humans, were in, 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 in Western societies at least, were introduced to lots of food, lots of plenty and engineering around food to create all these different flavors and to make them have a long shelf life. So people got fat, people got sick, people are still getting sick, but we may actually be learning. I'm I'm reading statistics now that show that millennials eat more vegetables and are far more health conscious than their parents. Oh, I believe that. I think what's happened is now over the last few generations, We're more aware now. People now are starting to realize, "Oh, this is something we need to be more aware of, we need to pay attention to, and we need to be serious about. Oh, because it's just, before- just your options to eat out now. I mean, look how much that's significantly changed. God, I was with Taylor just a couple days ago. We were down in Palo Alto. I mean, we have some over here. We eat at Luna all the time, which is this fresh place that we get to eat that's really great. You know, you got Whole Foods right around the corner. and But man, we go down to Palo Alto and it seems like almost every other spot is mm-hmm. a, a healthy spin on like another joint that everyone was used yeah. to seeing for many years. So, I mean, the, the market, I mean, we're, we're definitely responding. I definitely think that 
Um, like anything else, the the pendulum swings really hard one way, and then we, we tend start to, to learn from right. We yeah, learn from it. It's like, like oh, there's problems if we go that far. It's it's in our nature. It's in our human nature to press these boundaries, to stretch. To it's how le- we learn. It is how we learn. It's like we're not going to learn until like enough people die off. Like oh shit, look, lots of people are dying off. It's time to go yeah. the other direction. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should try something different. It's really yeah. it's yeah. really how we do things. Yeah. When you look back at history and all the ways uh, how we how we figured out and then correct. I mean. And we're we're in, I believe that we're in yeah. a time of seeing a major correction with food, and you see some brands that are already adopting and jumping on board. You see new brands Dude, that are popping. It's becoming up. cool. And yeah. as a parent, so when when I was a kid, so my parents' generation, right? Parents didn't even think twice. Like if you took if you had a bunch of kids and you're like, oh, I'm, you know, can I can we take your son? Can your son come over for dinner, or we're gonna enjoy ourselves? And then they could give you like ice cream and candy and go crazy. Today, if you did that, uh, parents might have a problem with that. It wasn't like that when we were kids. Yeah. Do you guys remember what Halloween was like? Oh, there's diets like kids coming over now. Like they're like, well, I can't have dairy. I can't have any yeah. gluten. I can't. I'm like, oh my god, you're a pain in the ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really? But you're like six years old. What, what friends give over? Uh, yeah. Timmy and Rachel are not allowed to come over and play <laughs> yeah. here. So, do, do you this guys one has a peanut allergy? Do, you, do really? you guys remember when we were kids though on Halloween? Yeah. Halloween, I would come home. We just were, the only thing we were worried about Halloween was razor blades. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> razor yeah. blades? Like, who was putting the razor blades in there? It happened like one time. Some <laughs> asshole ruined Halloween I, for everyone. I actually think it was, I think later on we found out it was like a big myth, that, but it was a big was, scare. You remember was, that? I know, oh, I know. I, my mom wouldn't let me eat the candy apples. You know what I'm yeah. saying? No candy apples. Yeah. It was made in someone's the one, the one fruit. The poison apple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, one, yeah, the, the one, one fruit. Like, what? Don't eat the fruit. Eat the package. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> but, Rich. but it's true. When I was a kid, we would come home with a big old pillowcase full of candy and there were no limits like eat it you know as much as you want and when you're done you're done yeah, i was allowed to do that today today most parents give their kids limits for that yeah. kind of stuff so it's starting to change and look i want people to have the freedom to make as many choices as they possibly can grow themselves and whatever here's what i don't like don't make me pay for your bad decisions that's where we i have a problem so you know we're talking about the free market with food Here's where the here's where the free market will start to get regulated with food when when we start paying people's other people's health care yeah. and health bills. Right. That's how they're going to make the case to start to regulate food yeah. and say, well, you can't oh. eat this, you can't eat that, and then everyone's going to be like, yeah, because I don't want to pay your bill. And then that's a that's a that's a whole other conversation. That's Fuck. a whole other problem. Next question is from Katie Gassman. Any suggestions on getting over the fear of starting a new business? I've been planning my own business around fitness and self-love specifically designed for women, but I'm afraid of judgment from peers. Mm. Get comfortable with fear Mm. and failure. Embrace it. Get comfortable with that. I mean, I think that, I think success is just a series of lots and lots of failures that you've learned to get comfortable with. And I think the more you, I think too many people that go into something and they, they put all their eggs in a basket. They they have this brilliant idea, and it's there's this fear to jump into it because it's got to make it. Like, why does it have to make it? Like, what if it doesn't? And I'm not saying have the attitude, like, start a business with the idea that, oh, it'll probably fail. Yeah. I'm not saying give up on it, but be okay with that. That's a, that's a very real possibility. I mean, when we started this up, as brilliant of an idea as we all thought it was going to be, very much so, I, in the back of my mind, I was okay with the fact that it could fail. And what did that look like? Did, it, did that mean it was going to ruin my life? Did it mean I'd have to stop? Did it mean that business wouldn't go on? Did it mean that I couldn't be successful still? No. In fact, what it probably meant was that I'm going to try something I've never tried in my life before, and I'm going to learn something from it. Mm-hmm. And hopefully I learn, and I'm successful, and I make some money along the way, but there is a potential that I won't. And in fact, I'm probably going to fail a ton of times before I finally get to that one mm-hmm. where I'm going to. I mean, the, the the success rate is so low in entrepreneurship that it's it would be silly for us to try and find the perfect idea. It's a much better strategy to go after these things that you feel passionate about it. Be okay with the mm-hmm. fact that you're going to fail in it. Yeah, passion and, will, will keep driving you through all those those blocks and the in those 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 times where things are challenging and difficult. And uh, yeah, you honestly, if you just immerse yourself, um, as long as you're passionate in that direction, you can see yourself long term in in that general area. Allow flexibility. Allow yourself to understand that um, you know it, it may change completely. Your your idea is going to change mm-hmm. completely from what it starts with. So don't put too much too much time and effort in the the perfect 
um, plan going into it. Like literally less is more because, uh, going in knowing that you're going to suck and, and it's, it's, even though you're going to try really hard to not suck every day going forward is going to be an improvement. And so that's, that's really how I kind of look at, at things when I start a business. I, I don't think so. The fear of starting a new business, I don't think is the biggest problem with entrepreneurs. I think the biggest problem, cause, cause there's a lot of people that you'll talk to and you'll say, Hey, have you ever tried being an entrepreneur or starting a new business? And a lot of people, actually a large percentage of people will say, Oh yeah, one time I tried this thing, but it didn't work. I think the biggest obstacle for entrepreneurs is when they try hard and then they fail and then they're they're scared. Oh, 100%. That's what and I mean. they never want to try again. Yes. Yeah. And and let me tell you something. Uh it, it's it's actually quite rare somebody succeed the first time. I've never met anybody. That they treat. I've never I've met a well, lot here, of, I've met a lot of millionaires, okay, in my lifetime and have had the opportunity to train them, to hang out with them, to be around them in my yeah, lifetime. What do they all have in common? And one of the things that they all have in common is they have failed. They've all failed more than I have failed. Yeah. You know, and that was what always kept me well, going. Built up their armor. Well, that's what that's what always kept me going. Is as I'm going through in business after business, and and I would like to think that a lot of mine were pretty successful. So I'm looking at these guys that have got millions and millions of dollars and seeing yeah. like, man, I want to be at that level at one point. And when I'd ask them their failures, like, oh, I mean, they could sit there and talk to me for hours about all the things that didn't come to or all the yeah, things like hundreds of millions or of how dollars. Many, they I mean, lost how many times have you oh heard God. this from a multimillionaire? Like, yeah. oh yeah, I filed bankruptcy twice, right, or three times, like. Super common. Very common. Yeah. That's more common, common than hearing someone go like, oh, yeah, just great idea. Hit it out the park. Like, that's <laughs> never, <laughs> never. Everything worked. Like, I've right actually away, never man. heard yes. that. Nobody You're, has ever said, oh, Adam, easy. I thought I'd do this fitness idea. It was fucking brilliant. We put it together. We executed. I'm a millionaire. Like, never heard that. Ever, ever, ever Here, heard that. Here's some statistics, okay? No. The founder of Pandora approached investors 300 times before he got funding. 300? 300. Oh, I love it. Sylvester Stallone was rejected. 1,500 times before he sold the script Rocky. Thomas Edison created 10,000 failed prototypes before he created the electric bulb. Hmm. Dyson, the, the vacuum cleaner, 5,126 failed prototypes. I mean... I, we I can go. It. I can read. I can find statistics like this all day That's long. That's the shit that ah oh, that 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 fuels me. Listen, I love hearing that. Think man. about it this way. I, I, this was told to me when I very first got into uh, the fitness business, and I had uh, mentors. You know, these are people that I looked up to and would try and follow. And I learned. They. I heard this one thing, and and it just stuck with me because it made so much sense. And it's this. It's like I remember years ago, like my mentor told me. Business is like playing baseball. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, well, when you're at that, <laughs> that went right over yeah. your head. <laughs> you're like, uh, try another analogy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm out. Yeah. So yeah. baseball is like it's like baseball. You're 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 they're gonna you're gonna get things pitched at you. Right. Thirty percent is considered good. And and you're gonna swing at it yeah. and uh and you'll miss and and you may hit one. And he said, but the difference is life will pitch as many balls at you as you want. So imagine if I'm at the, I'm at, uh, you know, I'm on a baseball diamond and I'm swinging at the ball. I'm going to swing at every ball and I'm going to swing and swing and swing and swing until I finally hit one. And it, eventually I probably will connect yeah, statistically and hit a home run. Well, the, crazy, the crazy part is that the real good stuff is in failure. Yeah. The real good shit, the growth, the real learning, the lessons mm -hmm. that happens in failure. That doesn't happen in, in coming up with a business idea and it working out. No. It happens you don't learn anything about when yourself. you pour your heart into something, you believe in something, and then you're proved wrong. Yeah. And then it didn't work out the way you thought or got frustrated, or you might have found out you don't like it. Yeah. Like, oh man, I thought I'd really like doing this. Fuck, this sucks. Yeah. Not for me. You know right. what I'm saying? I remember when I started the, the mobile car detailing business. Thought it was a brilliant idea, right? It was <laughs> so brilliant. And I still think it was pretty damn brilliant, you know, because yeah. I think there's, we live in an area, we live in the Silicon Valley, there's a lot of money and stuff like that. And a lot of people that, just want to get their car washed wherever they're working. They don't want to go to the car. You're was, thinking like, I want to make this much money. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mind you, I'm also working a full-time job already. That's the part you didn't calculate. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. But in my head, I'm going like, okay, and I'm, I'm a, I was acquiring somebody else's business who was moving on from it. So I already had like a little bit of a customer base. So I'm like, in my head, I'm going like, okay, I'll make this much money off it. It's going to cost me this much money. So what, what, what closed me on doing it was... I knew that I could get out of it and at least not lose money. So that was a big thing for me. It's like, okay, 
I like the idea. I, I could see myself doing this. The investment in it, I can see myself making sure. I, ease, even if I worked it myself on weekends, I could at least make my money back and at least learn from it. Or it potentially could grow into something and I staff it and it turns into this big thing. Well, what ended up happening was I was washing a lot of cars on the weekend. You know what I'm saying? I was like busting my ass washing a Hummer for three hours, you know, to make a couple hundred bucks just so I could keep this business afloat. And it never got to the point where I was busting out so much traffic that I could staff it with three or four people that could go out and run and do it all. And it finally got to a point where it was like, man, I'm I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul because I'm trying to get this business going, but I'm su- my other business is suffering that pays the bills. Yeah. And I finally said like this, it's not what it was cracked up to be. I, I, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot about that and understanding that and how to look at a business. And, and-, and it builds tremendous character. Oh yeah, are you kidding me? When I'm out there scrubbing the fucking time. I'm a six-figure guy out there fucking yeah. on a Saturday when he could have off and I'm fucking scrubbing grease off of wheels not to even make any it real money. It teaches you, know? you that you're not above any right, of those things. Right. That's what it teaches every single time. Every single time I do something new and outside of my comfort zone, I am it just it humbles you but in a in a way that is it, it is fulfilling. It is rewarding. It is like what I needed. Right. You know, like I need to know that about myself. I can't have this, can't float around being the fucking man all the time. Right. And yeah. and, and to address the, the judgment from your peers, fuck them. Who cares? Man, if someone, if you, people that They're ju- not going to understand you anyway. Most people Dude, don't have that mentality anyway. Uh, somebody, if you, if somebody, if people are judging you like that, if they're pointing out your flaws, if they're calling you names, if they're making fun of you, they're teasing you, all those things are all reflections themselves. Mm-hmm. So don't look at it like that. If somebody takes the time out of their day to criticize something that you're doing, what a fucking loser they are. That's them. They have their they have their own issues. And you got to learn to look at it like that. When somebody criticizes me, it's like, really? You slid in my DMs to talk shit to me? Like, you I took the time. You to took the that. time to do that? I don't even know who you are. Like, <laughs> I'm, too, I'm so busy doing shit. I'm too busy failing That's and it. getting ahead in life that I don't even have time to worry about what the fuck your insecurities are and why you're coming at me like that. Yeah. So- you know, as far as judgment from peers, like that should never. And they're be. not. Gonna, and look, mm-hmm. here's the deal: if you're if you're actually entrepreneur minded, um, most people won't understand you anyway. And here's the other thing: when you tell somebody who isn't that in that same mindset, and you say, "Hey, I have this business idea, I want to start it," and then they'll ask you questions, and then you'll tell them what you want to do and how much money it might cost and whatever, and they may say to you, "I don't know, man. I don't think you're gonna. I don't think that's gonna be good." Let me tell you something secretly. They want you to fail. Yeah. Now, not because necessarily they're malicious. It might not be because they don't like no, you. No, because they're scared themselves because they're, right. they're not doing it. You're doing it. And, and they, they want, want they want to be- like, Why would you do that? They want to be proved right. Right. Because here's how a lot of people live their life. Yeah. A lot of people live their life and they're, you know, they're kind of unhappy with their lives and their jobs. It's not really fulfilling. They had all these dreams, but they didn't do them. And the way that they comfort themselves is they say, well, I made the safe, the right decision this is what I should do. I have everything I need. I'm, I'm, this is all good. But then when somebody else goes and takes a risk, oh shit, if they succeed, does that mean did I make the wrong decision? Could I have done it? Is the reason why I didn't take those leaps because I was scared, not because I was being logical? Like they don't like that. And if they see you fail, they, they might make them happy. Not because they like seeing you fail necessarily, but because now it proves to them like, oh, okay, cool. It is impossible. I'm so glad I never took that chance or I'm so glad I never you know, you know, stepped out of my comfort zone. So when it comes to your peers, like, I tell you what, I got used to it a long time ago. Like some people, a lot of people think I'm crazy. Sal's going to do another thing. Yeah. Sal's going to do this, you know, he's, whatever. Right. It's just, okay, whatever. Not right. a big deal. Watch I really don't me. care anymore. Watch me. Next question is from MDX Strength. Why do CrossFit women develop a trunk rather than an hourglass waist shape? I enjoy CrossFit, but I'm not liking the trunkish development. Ooh, this is mm. good. This is actually a good point you right here. You don't like the obliques. Well, huh? there's there, there's a couple reasons. One, uh, you know, CrossFit is so anti bodybuilder that they've neglected to do some of these movements that help sculpt a shapely, you know, excite looking physique. I mean, how many times have you ever walked into CrossFit gym and seen people doing bench press and bicep curls? Mm. Yeah, never. Like, yeah, but it, it, do you think it helps to have a symmetrical physique by doing bicep curls and fucking chest press? Absolutely, mm-hmm. it fucking does. So you're neglected there. And then if you do a lot of heavy squatting, heavy deadlifting, and a lot of these power type movements, you're going to develop a, a waist, a trunk, a powerful one. Yeah. And so, and, and I don't find that unattractive. Right. By the some way. people, some I think people, it's cool. But I get, I get if you're a woman and you, and you already genetically might have kind of a, 
boxier type of hips or you're kind of got a, that it may exaggerate that look mm-hmm. and you may not like that. I think I think that might play a role, but I think that plays a really small role. You know what I think is happening here? I think that there's a bit of self-selection bias going on when you're maybe not self-selection, but there's a bias going on because you're good at it. Well, when you look at cross top CrossFit athletes, the top ones are the ones that have the genetics. They have the build, the natural build. And then of course the training on top of it. But yeah, Doug, female, would, female Doug, would you athletes, pull up a uh, top three female CrossFitters yeah. in the images of them? So yeah, I can, because you're right. They're it, all, they're all going to have the boxy. You're squares. not look at, look, here's the deal a f- the, the, the classic, the classic hourglass, you know, wide hips, small waist, that's you know, bikini, big, that's a big, bikini competitor, but that's, but that's not the best natural body for sports. Yeah. It it's just a, isn't. No, no it's, it's not. not a, it's not a super lean physique anyway. It's, just, like, it's, it's why, just why, a, it's a why those, physique. those girls tend to gravitate towards a sport like that because it's, it's most conducive for their, mm-hmm. for their body. Yeah. That's who I was looking for. Yeah, right? yeah. She's the top, the top chick. Yeah. I mean, they're, at, they're, click they're, on a, click on a full image of her body. Like, and you can see how, how boxy her. Well, her hips are. here's the thing. Like, okay. If you look at, if you look at men and women and how we naturally look and how we evolved men, uh, this is, you know, you can't really debate this anymore. It's pretty accepted, right? Men evolved to hunt. We evolved to do lots of physical movement. We're physically naturally stronger than women are. Women evolved a little bit differently. They evolved probably to gather, uh, raise young, be able to have a child, all these different things, right? So our bodies kind of reflect that. So women, for example, store body fat in their lower body. Men tend to store body fat in their, in their trunk, why? Why is that the case? Well, the the total accepted theory is that if you are a pregnant woman, having a lower center of gravity is going to make you make it easier for you to move and function. For a man, we need to have our limbs be free. We need to have legs that are that are that can move and arms that can move. And so if we are going to store body fat, we're going to store it in our midsection. And and this just makes it it's just better for athletics because it gets out of the way of your limbs from moving. So people who tend to succeed at super high performance type sports tend to exemplify this a little bit. So if you look at top female athletes in a lot of different types of sports, especially ones that require lots of strength, they typically will have more narrow hips. They tend to have, you know, boxier waists and it just lends itself well to, you know, to, and, and you even, you actually even find female athletes at that level tend to store more body fat in their midsection I, than women I could argue their too though that a lot of the movements that are in CrossFit are going to exaggerate that there's they're all super functional yes, gross, bo- gross you, motor movements if you if you're yeah. doing a a squat an overhead uh, squat and if you don't think that's going to to build your core, your obliques more than just doing a standard back squat or a front squat or a movement like that, or you're doing a lot of these Olympic type lifts, you are going to have a pronounced core oblique area, which is totally fine and cool. I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But some women don't want that look. I mean, how many times you guys train a client? I've had clients tell me, I don't want abs. I just yeah. want a flat tummy yeah. and I want hips and I want that hourglass look. I've, yeah, I've had someone complain about their traps, like being being too big as, as we've been like getting like more serious into weightlifting sometimes like the propensity the genetic propensity for you know a couple of my clients it was like they're starting to really build and develop traps as a result right and it's like and, oh, i don't like this yeah, right but it, 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 is this really a you know here's the thing though is this no, really it's a problem not, yeah. it's no it's not no. a problem but i, I mean to, i think it's fair to address it for a person that here's the thing i think someone like this who asked a question like this Gets into CrossFit because somebody told them that. She oh, needs to understand there's more options. Well, yeah, it's not ideal for a, a physique body. Like yeah. if you're looking for the model look, if that's or what body, you want. You got to train in that direction. Yes, yeah. you train. You train a body to look a certain way. Like CrossFit was not designed. Like although, and I, this is why I think questions like this, and why I'm glad you picked this question. Whoever did is more and more of my friends that I'm talking to that have been in CrossFit since the beginning and are still still in it. Some of the things that they don't like. Is because CrossFit's getting so big, it's inevitable they're starting to market towards the sex appeal and the of course, look. Of course, and so it's now because it's it's moving away from the sport, which it should be. It should be stay and remain. It's a fucking sport. It's not, but it's starting to move into the look of it. And well, it's it, on TV, dude, and, and they want to sell shit, right? You know? And so now, what you're going to get, you're going to get more women like this and men, but potentially that are going to come into this sport, wondering why. 
their body doesn't look like this hourglass look. Well, like I mean, CrossFit wasn't designed to give you an hourglass look. It was it yeah. was designed to be the fuck. What's it? The, the uh, fittest human yeah. in the world. Well, like, here's how you the get the fittest human in the world may not be what you think driven. is the sexiest type of look for you. Yeah, you know? I mean, an hourglass. I mean, that comes from like preferred, you know, body fat storage, small waist, wider hips. Um, and then you develop your glutes. You could, I guess, you could develop your shoulders. Oh, to I, it bro, bit. listen. Let me tell you. I've I have sculpted many bikini competitors that had kind of box. I've done it with Katrina since we've been dating. I've completely changed her physique. Now it doesn't mean I changed her genetics. She already has boxier. And hips. she by, and she was a high level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, athlete. Yes. Yeah. So and that's a, that's a, that's a good point because yeah. if she had the genetic hourglass, she probably would not have been able to perform right. at that level. Right. And when I got a hold of her and she finally let me do her programming, her diet and everything, I I trained her to. Sc- I, I, when I asked her, I said, "Well, what well, do you want from me? Do you want to be able to perform like a basketball player, like you played your whole life, or do you want to look a certain way?" She's like, "Well, I have always hated my back. My back looks all broad, and I have these I have really wide wide hips, and they're square and boxy. I look like a box when I start lifting weights." Well, it's because you're not lifting to sculpt your body. So I've I've shaped, I've sculpted her body to give her as much of an hourglass as her her genetics will let her. She's never gonna look like me. Uh, you know who's one of these fucking Instagram or like a Paige Hathaway yeah, or who's got like a tiny little waist and hips or whatever. Like that. I don't even know that's a good example, but you know what I mean. Everyone's seen the Instagram model that looks more like a model, doesn't look like a CrossFitter. Those people already have that gen- that those genetics, but well, you can definitely sculpt the body. It definitely reminds me of even when I was deliberately training to uh, fit a certain physique for football for performance, right? And I, I mean, my traps were huge. I had no neck, you know, a big chest and just powerful core, powerful legs and, Great and glutes. big arms. Yeah, big, <laughs> fabulous glutes. And then I would like go right into basketball and that did not do well for me. Like, <laughs> like my arms got in the way. Right, you know, trying to dribble down, trying to be more athletic and loose, and I was not loose. I was like super tight in my movement patterns, yeah. and so um, the way that you move, the way that you train, obviously, it's going to produce a result. And so you have to just assess these things, you know, going into subscribing into uh, a program. Like obviously, like it's it's towards a specific direction, even though they they change it up all the time. You don't know what the fuck is going on over there. Um, it's, it's definitely more favors like the gross yeah. motor movement patterns and being more athletic. So your body's going to, going to look the I part. Mean, here's what I like though. I do like that CrossFit is putting forward female athletes that look strong. No, I want to go on shit. record saying that like, is I'm, yeah, I think we're all fans of, of women wanting to be strong and powerful. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I mean, that's, that goes without saying. It's yeah. a nice, it's a nice offset. To but, I all, but I, but I want to go on record saying that I'm with you. I, I like it. I, I got nothing wrong with it at all. I think it's great, yeah. but I will say that I have had a lot I of clients. I also like bikini models. Yes. Sorry. And I've had a lot of clients. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like that look. If I give you the top three CrossFit girls, which we're looking at on the, on the TV right now, if I give you those three girls and then I give you the top three bikini models and I show them to, you know, 80% of my female clients want to look like the bikini models sure. that don't have six pack rock hard abs or mm. you know bulging shoulders or what like that they don't they don't want that look for them which that to each their own that's okay so that's when i it. hear a question like that you know i think your your programming your training is not ideal you're going to i'm sorry but going to a crossfit if you want to shape and sculpt the body a certain way I, I don't care who tries to tell you this, whatever CrossFit friend or whatever. Oh, my body looks great, or I did this at CrossFit. Like, no. If you're looking to sculpt the body, it's just not ideal for that. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you know. And and you know, again, the whole small waist and get your waist as small as possible. Functionally speaking, it's terrible. Oh, That's like yeah. the worst thing you could. Like a strong core and strong obliques are very important to protecting your spine, allowing you to move well. Unless you you have genetically wide waist anyway. There is nothing wrong with developing uh, your core. You, at the most, what are you going to add? A quarter inch to your waist, a half an inch, maybe, if you can develop tons of muscle. And I think you'll look better and be healthier. This whole, like, it's been like this for a long time. You know, like women used to wear corsets, and now it's the squeams, and now guys are doing it. It's like, what What are you guys doing? I mean, if you act <laughs> so stupid, if you absolutely yeah, love, extreme, right? if you absolutely love CrossFit and you've got an incredible, uh, you know, box owner or trainer, you absolutely could do both. I mean, you could have you could have somewhat of a CrossFit type of feel and routine, but then be be doing specific exercises to develop muscles on your body to give that illusion. Like, I mean, I, I used to to talk to my bikini girls all the time. Like, 
I can't I can't make your butt look like Jennifer Lopez, right? Yeah. I can't if you have a long origin insertion in the glute, you tend to have this kind of longer flat looking butt. So I can't change the origin insertion muscle. But what I can do is I can develop those hamstrings that you've completely neglected because you never fucking deadlift, you never hamstring curl, and I can develop those to give you a more a more pronounced hamstring, which is going to look like it tucks underneath the butt and makes your butt look more bubbly. And then I can start to hit parts of your glutes that mm-hmm. you probably don't hit. Like a lot of people don't target the glute me because we just don't, it's just not, we don't move in that plane very much that requires the mead to get kick in as much. So, and that will start to push out the hips. So there's little tricks of the trade that you can do to develop muscles on your body to create the illusion mm-hmm. of a more hourglass. But at the end of the day, genetics play the first role for that's sure. It. Of that's course. it. So check this out. If you want to uh, look at our episodes and see what we're talking about on a minute-by-minute basis, that's in our show notes. Go to mindpumpmedia.com, click on the tab, go under podcast, and check out our show notes. Check it out. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.